Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing games that were made by the homebrew programmer, Edward Smith. In the past, I have had the privilege of meeting several homebrew programmers, those that have made their own homebrew games, and those that have made some really cool hacks for the Atari 2600, many times pushing that system to its limits. It's been my experience that the best Atari 2600 homebrew programmers were old school gamers themselves, and Edward Smith is no exception. Here he is as a young man playing the 2600. And here he is today. Much like his contemporaries, Thomas Gench and John Champeau, he is creating Atari 2600 games that were not even possible or even remotely part of people's imagination 40 years ago. I asked Edward about his background in programming, and he said, My educational background is math and statistics, so I learned programming through the normal course of school. Also, from elementary and high school, basic and Pascal, a little. I asked him what made him decide to start programming games, and he said, It turns out I took an assembly language class as an elective that was based on the Motorola 68000 processor. A couple of years ago, I was listening to an arcade podcast and learned that some 80s arcade games used M68000, so it inspired me to find an M68000 emulator, dust off my old book, and see if I could program a game. I did, and built a cabinet for it. Continuing, he said, A few years later, I got into the Atari Game by Game podcast, and learned that Atari also used assembly, and that Stella existed. So I dove in. Much essential help from the AA, AtariAge.com community, or I would have never got off the starting line. My first program was in December 2017. I still consider myself a newbie, and my games are limited to my skill set. When I asked about his gaming background, he said, I am not much of a gamer these days but have a fondness for old school games. I had an Atari as a kid, an NES, and played some DOS games, and also had friends with Intellivision and Commodore 64. My last console was the original PlayStation. Never have got into online stuff. Only in the last five years have I been back into gaming and just retro at that. Well, let's get right into checking out his games. The first one is Alien Attack. All right, so the story behind the game is you are defending the colony from alien attack. You must defeat 16 waves of six aliens to save the colony and win three mothership battles, levels 6, 12, and 19. The aliens will try to knock out your laser cannon and your laser cannon energy batteries. The laser cannon power supply will only last for a count of 60, so each wave must be defeated within that time so that the power supply can recharge between waves or else your laser cannon will be rendered useless. You have a shield which can be activated by pulling down on the joystick. The shield will last for one second, but cannot be activated again for four seconds. The shield also puts a higher drain on your five power units. Can you defeat the aliens and save the colony? And next up we have Alien Revenge. Since the last attack, you have constructed a planetary shield defense, but they have discovered the orbiting power station that controls your planet's shield. You control the power station's lasers that will defend the station. You can fire in eight directions with the joystick. Once again, time is important. You must defeat each wave within 40 seconds, because your station must recharge its power supply. Also, your station cannot withstand more than 10 hits per wave. Defend the station by destroying the aliens. You can also shoot the alien missiles. You have a shield which can be activated every 4 seconds by pressing the button. I really enjoyed the sequel. It was very imaginative, and I thought the whole concept of being almost like a stationary shooting game was quite interesting, if not very original. Next up, we have Pickle. Now, for those of you that were not in Little League as a child, you probably never played the game Pickle in real life. But for those of us that were Little League players, this is a very good nostalgic game. Now, here's the story behind the game Pickle. 
The classic Sandlot game is now on the Atari VCS. Pickle is for two players and uses the joystick controller. Players alternate between controlling the runner and the throwers. When the runner is tagged out while off base, the players swap roles. The first player to steal 11 bases wins the game. Now, this was a typical game that your Little League coach would probably have you play back in the day to help you improve not only your throwing skills, but help you learn to steal bases effectively. Next up, we have one-on-one -on -one basketball. Now, because of the fact that there was never a real sports basketball, oh, there was a prototype but never an official release, and because it was quite difficult, period, to make a good basketball game on the Atari 2600, Edward Smith decided to make one himself and did a wonderful job. Uh, this game brings to mind the game one-on-one -on -one basketball starring Larry Bird and Dr. J, but is quite original. Uh, not only do you get to play regular basketball, but it has horse and around the world. So definitely a must-have for those who have been waiting for a great basketball game for the Atari 2600. And I have saved the best for last. Now, if many of you remember that I reviewed golf games on a previous episode. And on that previous episode, I reviewed the original golf game for the Atari 2600 that was released back in 1979. Unfortunately, that game was not exactly user-friendly, but was not the fault of the programmers as it was kind of difficult to do much else with only 2K of memory to work with. Well... Another game was released several years later that unfortunately is pretty much unknown in the United States and that is called MyGolf. The reason that it, it was unknown is because it was only released in PAL format. So since then, Atari fans have been waiting for a great golf game. And guess what? You don't have to wait anymore. Well, you just got to wait a little while later while it's in the final stages of programming. And this is Championship Golf. In this game, uh, which I consider to be Edward's masterpiece, you have 18 holes of golf to play through. You are able to have one to two players, and what's interesting about this game is it does not use the three-tap method that pretty much every golf game made in the last 30 years has utilized. It's realistic, it's fun, and most importantly, this is a game for serious golfers. The game has not yet been released, but there are some BIN files that Edward has released on the Atari Age forum, so check it out. It should be getting released here shortly, and I will post on the comment section and let you guys know when and where you can purchase this game when it is released. If you'd like to see me play an entire 18-hole game of golf, well, not very well, but, you know, I try really hard. Head over to my Patreon page, become a patron, and you will have access to not only watching me play this game all the way through, but also some really cool other game footage and some unreleased footage that you can't find anywhere else. If you're interested in purchasing any of Edward's games, head over to gooddealgames.com, where you can not only find his games, but also some prototypes, and other rare games for very reasonable prices. If you are a programmer and you make your own homebrews or hacks and you'd like me to profile your work on my channel, get in touch with me and I'd be happy to show your work on here. You can contact me via the comment section below or find me on the Atari Age forums under the name Classic Gamer 74 well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all enjoyed the hard work that Edward Smith has put into his homebrew games. If you liked it, please don't forget to give us a great big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And please consider becoming a Patreon and helping us out. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help this channel to grow. So please, consider becoming generous and helping us out on Patreon. Have you ever heard of the Fairchild Channel F? It was the first home video game console to use cartridges. And yes, it actually does predate the Atari 2600. Want to learn more about it? Tune in to next episode and I will tell you all about it and show you some of the cool game footage from this nearly forgotten home console. 
Well, until next time, this has been Anthony Gamer. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see each and every one of you in the next episode. Until then, have yourselves a great day. Goodbye.